looking to win a 32nd consecutive match at this particular event. The last time he lost was to Hyung Chung. Ready. Manorino decided. Here we go. Ball. Ball. Double fault, Love. and Novak's obviously Fifteen. aware of Manorino crowding the baseline. He was a metre inside the baseline as Novak made contact with that second serve. That's his style. Take time away, take the ball on the rise. So just have a look at Manorino here. Second serve. Starts just behind the baseline. He'll make a lunge forward as Novak tosses that ball up. He'll be inside the baseline to contact. And there's one big step from Manorino, and this is the problem when you've played a lot of tennis. You, you just, you're a little lactic, you're a little heavy. If you've got the miles in your legs, you can probably take a little time to warm up and you can get to your best but half a step slow on that particular forehand Manorino oh. 15, 13. Is that a slow start or is that the pressure that Manorino puts on with his aggressive return stance? It's nervous. It could be, 15. Robbie, but but it's heavier conditions, I think, when the roof closes. And he's hit all of the, these three points that he's lost. The mistake is in the net. So I'm not sure whether it's just heavier because it's uh, indoors now. Sort of lift his sights a bit, which he will. Two break points, first game. It's right around Novak's average first serve speed for last year. There it is, that ability to serve at his best when it matters most. Time and time again. Serves his way out of trouble. Just takes that little extra time, a few extra ball bounces, sets himself. Last year, he had the second best serving numbers only behind Hubi Hercatch. You talk about a shot evolving and getting better. It's almost got better and better with each season. This time, he's up to the task. Slider wide, slider T, and then slider wide on those three tricky points. You wonder if Manorino's got to give him a T and cover that wide serve on the forehand court.
Have a look at his forehand. So it's a simple swing, but it's very flat. It's got good depth. It's hard to believe he can get the kind of power he does with the effort that he puts in. Yeah, that's what happens when you st string your racket at 10 kilos, 22 pounds. It's which, right around where he is. Which would be 50% of the rest of the tour, right? Yep. Poison Hawkeye, just giving us a, a little nugget of information. Novak's only served one double fault before the start of this match. He served two in one game. But it looks like he still might hold. Loves that slide out down the middle on the outside. Fights off two break points. The Serbians are happy. He is up and running. This men's singles in fourth round. What do you make of this serve? Well, I made the comment the other night that the uh, total seems greater than the sum of the parts. It's almost a, an abbreviated lazy takeaway. Wrist is delayed, racket head is delayed, but he gets himself in a good position. Prone to throwing the ball a little too far in front on occasion. You could see there he almost collapsed into the serve. We did see a couple of double faults. But uh, unbelievably effective, great spot server, and basically serves his best when it matters most. Adrian Marini. He's a funny individual, this Manorino has got some 15. quirky mannerisms. In fact, one of the things he doesn't like is knowing who he's playing next in the draw. He does not look at the draw, and he only wants to find out as late as possible, literally, when his match is called. If he can wait that long, he will. Oh. So analysis is not a big part of his, uh, his strategy. No. Nope. He backs his game style against all comers. does seem heavy that last ball just 15. it barely traveled through to Novak just died no real life in the court nothing bouncing too high that'll suit Manorino players using the full dimensions of the court. 
It feels like they're playing in a vacuum almost Fifteen. down here. That the the, the, uh, the air it, it, the air is just so still. It's 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 like there's uh, there's no movement at all here, and the ball I think because of that is a bit heavy. So that that might contribute to these long rallies. It's harder to miss uh, in in this situation in, in this atmosphere. Sixteen shots each. <laughs> And it all started with a magnificent return of surf. And then look at the depth Novak is able to keep. Suffocates you into submission. Manorino stands well wide of that centre tee. And that's what he does. He takes you out of the court. 155. I really like that. So many times you see guys serve wide at 180, 190. It's too fast. Take pace off. Let the side spin do the work. Look where Novak made contact there. He's really struggling to cover the open court. Manorino wisely goes back in behind him. He's such a clever manipulator of the angles. He's the Frenchman. Yeah, he's got such good tennis IQ, doesn't he? Stands well wide again. The centre tee on the forehand corner. Let's. Once again, trying to take Novak out of the court. It's a nice visual for your second shot. And how effective is that, given where he was standing? Team Manorino, president of the ten tennis French Tennis Federation, Gilles Moraton, front and centre. Just hit it into the crowd behind you. I mean, the feel, the wizardry on that backhand side. It's been mesmerizing us for many years now. Both these guys, exquisite feel off that wing. Not sure what Novak is asking for there. Looking at his team. I'm just wondering, Wally, whether he, it's about his positioning when he's returning uh, because of this wide stance. Uh, that's all I can think of at the moment. But yeah, but he was certainly inquiring, wasn't he? Well, with Manorino standing as wide as he does, that's the obvious serve that you have to cover. But we've seen already that from this uh, position, he can hit all the spots of the court. There it is, T.
it's like PlayStation tennis. And I think Djokovic is in control of the joystick. Djokovic needs two games to love for and I can't help thinking, Robbie and Wally, that uh, he knows if he gets ahead in this match, it's, it's going to accentuate the problems of Manorino and the fact that he's played 15 sets already uh, in this, this year's Australian Open. If he gets ahead, it's going to be harder and harder for the Frenchman to come back. So he's got the early break. He was significant in his, uh, you know, not, not self-praise, but he, in his um, happiness about winning that first break of surf. Put him ahead, put him in the driver's seat. And Manorino's worked hard and still doesn't have anything on the scoreboard. Great tennis, though. Like, both men, uh, have, they have full control of their game. And they're hitting it so early. Yeah, but they just, yeah, it, like you said, Robbie, it's, it's like watching a computer game. Yeah. Just opening up the court. Oh. Everything comes out of the middle. Robbie, last night we commentated the uh, Felix Auger Aliassime yeah, match, and you said, no. What can Felix do? And I was a bit like, Well, Felix does a couple of things really well, but Medvedev had his measure. Yes. I wasn't actually sure what he could do differently, but when you look at players like this, they, can, they have scope to change what they've got, such control of all of their shots. They can change things up. They can surf to different spots, play with different spins, different paces, hit all parts of the court with off both wings. Very, very complete tennis players, the two of them. After a slow start, Novak has found his range, he's found the angles, he's found the answers, he's found the space. There's the early return. He's tried to employ it, but Novak serve has been up to task until that particular moment. But it just shows how effective it can be to take the ball that early, take time away, take the energy from the ball while it's still on the rise. But of course, players these days take such a lavish cut at the ball. It's hard for them to meet it as early as Manorino with his very abbreviated backswings. He's a machine, an absolute machine, Djokovic. And he has dialed in. He's up three, love. What an entertaining 19 minutes. So give us a good idea, this Hawkeye analysis piece of where Manorino hits the ball. He's the yellow balls. Look how early his average rally hit point is at the AO. And 
2024. And we know Novak hits the ball pretty early, but Manorino's still about half a meter on average in front of Djokovic. And so good at manipulating the ball, and that gives you a good idea of how early both these players take it. There's not many off the top of my head that hit the ball as early as these two. And when they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one another, really is a spectacle, Wally. Some great rallies already. Absolutely very, very enjoyable match. And we just hope that Manorino can get a foothold and make it a contest. Time. Novak just uh, might be asking for his, uh, his ventilation pump, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Fitzy, you said that Novak's a machine. Your courtside there, I've sat there a couple of times when he's played. He's got a well-machined body, hasn't he? He's got the snug clothes, he wears them pretty tight. But the guy looks better than ever, physically. I know Fitzy's very much an admirer of the human form, so he'll appreciate being that close to Novak. Yeah, in the words of uh, Guido Hatzis, Melbourne's one-time best comedian, he's a finely toned, tanned and sculpted athlete, mate. staggering watching him live it really is and you know it's it's like an artiste going against artificial intelligence here no, I, I mean he? i like what manorino did in the previous game wally when he took that serve early he, he substituted power for for earliness on the on the return he's got to do something different like that because when he gets in a baseline rally as good as he is it just doesn't seem like he can beat the ai down the other end no novak just just makes every adjustment doesn't he and he's just as good at full stretch as when he's set. Oh. where your, your execution has to be spot on because you can't let up. Novak will make you play one more ball. Love it might be an easy ball, but you've still got to make it. And at the end of some of these long rallies, that's easier said than done. So he just switches off ever so slightly there into the open court. He's in trouble again. See the slider there? That's 148. I mean, that's... 1540. Well, that's a little below what you would say is the optimal pace, but so many players could have a look at this. I've seen so many slider serves out wide at like 180, 190, and it actually carries through with forward momentum to the returner. At 148, Novak was two metres outside the alley hitting that. Oh.
doesn't really put a foot wrong, Manorino, but the scoreboard eludes him at the moment. Djokovic needs four games to love, but... When, you, when I watch Novak play, it's this, he's just got an absolute understanding of the correlation between power and accuracy on any given shot. And that's a hard thing for players to master. They've got all this power, but they don't marry it up with accuracy. But he's got the two of them just dialed in. Watch Ben Shelton play the other day, and it's almost like strap yourself into your seat like it's... <laughs> Ferocious, but wow, sometimes you just go, Whoa, he's up. Fifteen. Left. Yeah, a tough opening service game for Novak. Served two double faults. He'd only served one double in the entirety of the tournament coming into this match. But he has almost broken Manorino down in the opening four games here. It's been an absolute masterclass after the opener. And one love has quickly become five love. Djokovic needs five games to love for a second. players working very hard the scoreboard doing him no favors bottom right of your screen is Adrian Manorino's coach who's been with him for a couple of Time. years now Erwin Torto for all the young talent that uh, France has coming up. It's nice to see Adrian Manorino still flying the flag for the older generation, 35 years of age now. With the likes of Luca van Asche, Arthur Fies. And let's not forget, uh, maybe her catch will be taking on young Arthur Kazao of France as well in the fourth round. Robbie, he's Love. an exciting young Sitting. kid, isn't he? Uh, young Arthur. Because I, I, I did his match the other, his second round match, and he's, he's really exciting. It's so good to have some fresh faces coming through. And Fitzy, don't you just love um, all the French players? No one plays the same, right? They've all got their own particular style. And... Yeah, you've got to love that. I, I think it's fantastic. Oh. 
He's six foot tall, Arthur. He's serving at 220. How do you do that? As we see Novak just finishing off this almost perfect set. I mean, the young Frenchman we just mentioned, keep an eye out for him, everybody. He, he played a lot of handball when he was a youngster. He must have built up his shoulder and his arm awfully, uh, awfully well because uh, he's an extraordinary young player. Not overly big, uh, but he has power, finesse. Sounds like a really good kid, too. Oh. Got a really knuckle down here. 30. Does Manorino must get on the scoreboard? Sometimes it's just that that last shot when he does have Novak in a little trouble. There was a volley in the previous service game that he missed. He's done awfully well to get this far in the event, but he does want to give a good account of himself here. He's feeling a little fatigued. He's under the pump. So you are fatigued, but he had so much time there to play a double-handed backhand. He had a lot of height to work with, so it's just, it's just got to knuckle down, have a bit of pride in his performance, and make sure he has some respectability on the scoreboard. Wally, I feel like it's a cumulative effect from his first three rounds too. At the end of rallies like that, absolutely, his body is a little jaded. Oh. What I look for, Fitz, is how somebody decelerates when they're on the run. When they're fresh, they dig in and they power back. That's not quite the case with Adrian. A few little stutter steps after contact. Okay. Not looking dynamic. Djokovic certainly is. The first set is done and dusted in 33 minutes. Six love to the defending champion. That he just floated long. I think too, just yeah, just find a bit of execution. But you are right; it is at the end of some long rallies. But you, yeah, you just got to have the, that imagination and determination. You know, if he makes a couple more balls, it, it's not six love; it's four two. And of course, that affects yeah your mind big time, doesn't it? Sometimes you just got to hang around. But I kind of agree with Fitzy, though. Like, on return, might as well take some chances. If you get a second serve, we know we can take it early. He didn't come in. Go for something. Keep the point short. But you've got to be a little stubborn on your serve to try to hang on. I know this might sound a bit strange, too, but at the end of that first set, the last two games, Novak didn't look as comfortable as he did in the first four games. He, he looked like something was bothering him physically. He, he, he put that ice towel, I think it was, on. I, I'm not sure what it was, but he, he, he was a little tiny bit stressed. He's back now, though. Still asking for something, though. We had the feeling he was almost asking for a Ventolin puffer. If that's possible. He definitely took something. Definitely took something previous change events but uh, just to, to get back to your, your point you were making just about your your mental state when you're tired one of my favorite books and if you enjoy this sort of thing I can highly encourage you to read it is Endure by Alex Hutchinson sports scientist and he talks about the mind body and the curiously elastic limits that's the key word elastic limits 
of human performance. And that you can push yourself so much further than what you think you can. And the only limiting factor, really, everything boils down to what's between the ears, Wally. Well, I think if, if Adrian was playing some a lesser player, things would be slightly different. But this is almost like a silent contract. He's tired, he's playing he's Novak. And those are the s thoughts that are swirling around in your head, yes. aren't they? And they convince you that you are more tired than what you are. So it's like a dance. It's two people that already know the outcome. But if Adrian can just execute a little better, put a little pressure on the score. But as I say, you execute a little better, you're down 4-2, not 6-love. And Novak wants a puffer. Novak wants a nice towel. Things just change. with John Worthup, 60 minutes, and uh, he was speaking about when he's in the heat of battle, he is always looking for indicators from his opponent, even on the change of ends. He'll watch him if he's on the big screen, how he's drinking his water, how he's sipping it, how he's breathing. He's always looking for information about the guy he's playing, just stuff that he can tap into to get a read on him. It does seem heavy, though. The air seems heavy. There's no height in the bounce. It's like trying to hit your way through quicksand at the moment for Manorino. He might have been better off playing on a 35-degree day where everything was flying and he was getting some value. Irwin. Subtle brilliance in that rally it mustn't go unnoticed. The chip return when the ball was too close to him. I mean, we would have seen two players yesterday that would have just teed off on that, right? Then the chip forehand to stay in the rally. Then the slice before he finds his rhythm and unloads. Well, Fitzy said it, AI. Yeah. I think the slice uh, defensive forehand was the best shot for me in that rally. He beautifully manipulated the strings under that ball. Just subtle. Now, when you're defending, it's not just where you hit it, but how hard you hit it to buy a bit of time to come back. And Novak's just got it yeah. down pat. Oh. Robbie, just on that, um, I'm a bit of a boxing enthusiast. And 30, Joe Frazier, after he fought Muhammad Ali in the Thriller in Manila, he said, you know, I hit Ali with everything. I know he, he wouldn't have been able to eat for three months afterwards. I broke his ribs. I, he said, but he looked at me in the ring and he never batted an eyelid. He said, in the ring... He was a man, you know, you talk about where your mind can take you. Yes. And that was one of the most brutal fights in the history mm -hmm. of boxing. Too true. And I'm not suggesting we're in anything as severe out here today, but for Adrian... Oh. Yeah, it's the principle. He right? can lift. He can just lift that ever so slightly, execute just that little bit better, push himself that little bit harder. say that with the utmost of respect. Manorino hasn't won a game yet, but you don't feel like it's been as one-sided as what the scoreline is suggesting. has been 20, 25, 30 shot rallies. Well, I guarantee that Manorino feels better physically now, now than he did at the start. Adrenaline's coursing through his veins, the blood's flowing, heart, you know, heart's pumping. He would feel a little better now, so now's the time to, the to dig in. I think the question is, Wally, is he mentally as good now, losing the first eight games? Because Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help. He's, he's starting to worry that he's not going to get one here, and uh, he, he's got to do everything right in one game soon, or, or it might get ugly. I hope not for his sake, because he's, he's playing some good stuff here, amazingly enough.
And isn't that just the way? When everything's going against you. 15 love. Is that called Murphy's Law? Yeah, a little bit of bad luck right there. You know, I, I think I've rarely seen a one-sided match like this where the crowd understands, I think. Where, where they understand how well, actually, Adrian is, is playing here and the effort level and the genius of the guy down the other end as well. I mean, I mean there's a lot of respect here, even though the scoreline is as, as it is. Yeah, well said, Pitsy. Ball. And Fitz, you know what I mean. We've, we've all been in these situations where you're pretty much cooked and you're playing a good player and you're getting belted. And I'm not being disparaging of Adrian in any way, shape or form. It's almost like I just want to see him, or the people here, the 15,000 people here, see what he's got. He doesn't deserve an embarrassing scoreline. And if he can just find a little something to have some respectability on the scoreboard. That's the play, though. I mean, took it early at 30 all. That's the play. And look at Novak. He's kind of got his tail up now. I think he's enjoying this clean slate. And that was a blood curdling come on after he served that that big second serve at 30 or he's up a set a break 30 or second serve and and that's what you get from a competitor that was uh, <laughs> a statement was, it was <laughs> so heavy with the roof closed and the cool conditions it's been so hard for him to generate that kind of pace Any match, got to go back to Wimbledon 2016 against James Ward. English wildcard. Six love, three love, he was up against Wardy.
Paul. Deuce. Trent 177 I'm not sure if you see the wild card that year or not. So I don't see WC alongside his name. He's giving him a steady dart of that surf. He's actually a little bit dirty with himself, I think, for serving three double faults now in this match. And, and it, 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 I mean, the look of sort of disgust on his face when he hit a double fault <laughs> shows you what a perfectionist he is. Do you think Manorino has drawn a few of those double faults just by crowding? French fans can't cut a break like a Adrian at court level. Finally, Manorino gets the better of Novak in one of these long rallies. He's sending him coast to coast. Novak was hurting after this rally. And Fitz, you sort of noted this in his previous match in that third set against Echeverry. Novak just seemed uncomfortable with his breathing after some extended rallies. Well, he's certainly bothered by his breathing now, Wally, and uh, it's hard to read him, though. You know, I've, I've seen him do this before, and within a game, he's playing at his peak again, so it's just hard to read, but he's certainly breathing hard now and sort of visually showing everyone that he is. Thank you. Thank you. He can serve the, the flat one out wide for sure, but maybe you've got to make him do that on that big point. He loves just coming around the side of the ball, shaving it down the tee on that second court. get tired you talk about having a lot of strings to your bow beautiful combination of volleys doesn't commit too early give him a love give him a love 
Let me hear it. Game. And Wally, uh, Adrian's digging deep here too. From his point of view, he he deserves a game here, really. Well, he, he'd feel a lot better now than he did at the start of the match. So this is the time just for the, the mind and body to come together. Be determined, get on the scoreboard. Does Manorino extend the rally? Step in, crunch it, go for the first strike. Novak feeling the pinch, possibly. I think the latter. Games like this, though, can, can break a guy's heart. I mean, he is fought doggedly here to get a game. And Novak's just trying to fend him off to make sure of this outcome. Keep him at bay. Make him feel smothered here in terms of lack of games. And uh, it's sort of cruel, but it's what a great competitor does. Twelve and a half minute game already. If Manorino can come out on top, this could be a little momentum swing. I'm loving Novak's reaction there. I can't believe, I think, how well Manorino no, is returning. He's clued another return to the baseline. Now he's getting a taste of his own medicine. He knows what it's like to play against himself, Wally. Did that, did that ball just skip off the service line for Manorino? It just seemed to come on him so quickly when he was in a great position. There's the frustration. We showed you that last game and we showed you that reaction afterwards. It's not many people who would be able to guess the score. Great camera angle. You can see the height over the net, how they hit the ball with different spins, the shapes of the shot, the athleticism. It does seem so heavy, doesn't it? Look at the height of the bounce. Everything's sort of knee to waist. Yeah. Close the roof and then eventually they that's Novak's good anticipation at the net and then they the air the air gets pumped in they turn on the air conditioning of course once the roof is closed but Time. there's not a lot of life at court level it's dead I'm not sure that's helping Manorino a huge fan base Djokovic has uh, nice to call themselves Noel fam Nole fam 
Yeah, they are. When I look back upon, you know, the likes of Novak and Rafa in big moments, the people that seem to beat them are the Brutes. Soderling. Yep. Stan, Vavrinka. Yes. yes. Nick. Yep. you got to bash them up. Very hard to beat them with tennis, isn't it? Remember Sodling that year at the French Open? He was just clubbing the ball for all it was worth. You know, Robbie, that, that reaction we saw from Novak Love. at the end of that last it's game, I, it just, I couldn't help thinking and wanting to ask the question, do you really think he's satisfied with 10 of these? <laughs> he ain't. Yeah. He's not satisfied. He wants this tournament. He wants this match. And he wants another title here. Ball. Oh. It's just nasty, isn't it? You've played a long rally. You've done nothing wrong. Novak here. He's at full stretch. That's just in an awkward position. What does he do here? Nothing extravagant. That's just in an awkward position. Just keeps asking the question of you. Just give me a break. Give me an unforced error. Give me a bad choice of shot. Do something. <laughs> well, I think we're out of answers. Mm. He asked the question. <laughs> oh. And this, this game Love is a consequence of the last game. If, jo if Djokovic loses that last game or, you know, Manorino wins it, is it spring any step? It's almost just, just keeps closing that lid on Manorino's emotions. He can't get into it. His belief Ball. has been sapped. With this. Needs a few more of those, 15. Robbie. But have a look when Novak gives him a breather. Love 40. Not at 30 all. Not on break point. Yep. He's only had six unreturned serves in the entirety of the match as Manorino. You just simply cannot fall behind in a service game. Just relentless with his movement, with his shot placement, with his mental strength. And as Fitzy alluded, 24 majors isn't enough. He wants to climb into a galaxy of his own. I believe Adrian will get a game. He'll get on the scoreboard. Hypothetically, Robbie, if he didn't, it was six love, six love, five love. Would Novak give him a game? 
I think he would. And I say that because I saw Bjorn Ball play Terry Moore at the French Open. Love. Six love, six love, five love. And gave, he gave Terry a go. Okay. Yeah, but does, does that make you feel worse? No, oh, I think it oh, makes you feel so much better about oh, yourself. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> but see, it's a good question. <laughs> He, he's fallen off the, the level now, though, Adrian. He, it's it's broken his heart here, I think, in this late in the second set. That two games ago. Two love game, you reckon? Yeah, 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 threw everything at him. Couldn't get over the line. I'm starting to feel for him a bit here. Yeah. Didn't Just look, like that. Yeah, didn't look, didn't look good there either, did it? It's five love for Djokovic. She has not lost a game thus far. Fitzy, were you suggesting that should he give him a game? It's a little bit of a participation prize. and Those are never good, are they? You want to earn your prize. Yeah, you do. And, and I think uh, for your own self-esteem, you don't want someone to give you one. And, and look, he may well get one. I, I hope he does. He, he deserves one. He's been close here a few times. He had Novak stressed and stretched several times in, in early in this set. Um, but the champ was just too good at the, at, at the business end of each of each point, each game. So Look, I hope he gets one. Uh, but I don't. I think if I was him, I, I'm not sure I want him to give me one. I mean, it, it's just it's just an insult to your uh, ego. Time. That's where we differ, Fitzy. I take the charity. Robbie, I think what we're hearing from Wally about this subject is that he's happy to take a freebie in life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, I'm... hand out. And I can't speak for Robbie, but I'm very confident in, you're in my side of this camp, Robbie. You, <laughs> you, you and I, we don't want a freebie. <laughs> don't put words in Robbie's mouth. I'll tell you what, man. Come on, Robbie, here's your chance. Yeah. Masseur or... or... Fitzgerald here. Wh whose oh, side do you want? Man, I'm taking the fifth. I'm taking the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the confidence in the world in your character, Robbie. I do. All right. So, Manorino, let's get the first point right here. Let's build a game. Get on the scoreboard. There you go. Quick hands. He re-gripped his racket. At end change. 15 months. Is that a sign things are about to change? Oh. Fifteen. Oh. the conditions in order to help the ball get through the air quicker but I can tell you that both players are hitting the ball significantly lower over the net than what they did in the opening three matches but Robbie this it, it's a matchup issue too isn't it oh, uh, yes. uh, and and it's accentuated by the fact that he's had 15 sets before the start of this one he, oh, absolutely. he, he he's a little a tiny bit off the hundred percent mark, Adrian, because of his because of his body and how he had to recover. But it's also the match up here. Just doesn't suit. So Fitzy, we've seen uh, you know Edberg one year at the US Open won a string of five set matches to win the title. Uh, Alcaraz, 2022, string of brutal matches to win the title. Now, Adrian's played three in a row. Is Adrian the guy that in his off-season was doing the 400 intervals, the hill sprints, the... Is he that guy? And sometimes you have to be. Otherwise, this can happen. 
Well, this guy's from a different planet. Djokovic wins the second by the same scoreline as the first, six low. I'll, I'll take the Murray over trainer every time. Three slams, Olympic golds. Oh, oh no, but obviously there's a talent gap. That's how we got it. That's how we got it. No, but there's a talent gap there as well, Wally, between no, no, the likes of Andy Murray and Adrian Manorino. But to find yourself in this position after yeah. three five setters. Because he's been outplayed, no question about it. But physically, he's really feeling the pinch. A 3 5 set is a hell of an effort. It's, 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 there's not many players in, in the history of the sport that have been able to win 3 5 set is. And, and I, think, I think more than the physical, it's just who he's playing. Uh, his game yeah. doesn't match up against Djokovic. He's, I mean, it's a double he's too whammy. good. Yeah, it's a double whammy, isn't it, Fitzy? Who he's playing. I'm not talking about winning, I'm talking about getting a game. <laughs> A game. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Wallace is just trying to be a tough guy. <laughs> I mean, of Manly. Yeah, the matchup, it, it's just, it's just the, the perfect wrong scenario for him. seen that yet that was a nice little response Novak just kind of settled in I can just bump the ball back I know he's not coming forward but that was a change up we haven't seen too much of that from Manorino Novak applauding great touch and he has got outrageous touch Manorino I love that. He goes wide, he goes wide, he goes wide. If you're looking for the wide serve, he just lets you know he's got the tee covered. There it is. Perfect. First two sets for Novak. Well, that was nice. He scampered in. He can't continue to stay back if he gets Novak stretching. Surely he's got because he's not he's not winning those points. If he he's not putting enough balls away at the back of the court because Novak's defence is too good. So that's the play. Surely I thought he could have come in on that particular one. He so, came in on the next, and there so, it was. So did I. I thought he could have come in earlier. So, two little variations. We've seen the drop shot and now the survey and sneak, Robbie. So he's still thinking his way through the situation. Time violation, warning, Mr. It's got to be fair to both players. But yeah, well, what's she to do if the clock runs out? Yep. Got to call it. But I actually think we should do away with the shot clock, Robbie. Let's do away with it in this game. I think it causes more issues, and it actually is lengthened matches probably. Yeah, because players are watching the clock and taking exactly. as much time as possible now. E exactly. Let's get rid of it. Uh, 
Smith knows he got an unfortunate there. This game good sense. And I can tell you, this is the first time that Novak has won the opening two sets of this major. Six love, six love. Roland Garros 2005 against Robbie Ginnipri. He also started by winning the opening two sets. Six love, six love. So it's not a first time ever. He has sent his fans delirious. He's got just that little group just behind where he's sitting of Serbian fans. He gave them a big smile. He doesn't mind taking sections of the crowd on at certain times. We saw that in his second round match against Alexei Poprin. It actually motivated him. He's like a lightning rod, Novak. He just draws in energy. Negative, positive, doesn't matter. It's energy. He absorbs it, throws it back at his opponent. Many seat for now. Thank you. The back of the courts. Thank you. Oh, these VIPs coming in late. After their lobster thermidor, Robbie. <laughs> Just grab a seat. There you go. 24 and counting. What did Fitzy call it? Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong, will. That almost looked like it was going wide. Obviously, the net very taut near the net post there. Jumped up high, bounced back into court. to know the distance between the two contact points of the return there where is he he is two meters outside the alley and the contact point on the second bounce would have been level with the alley on the other side that is a 12 good, 13 meters at least it's a good spread oh yeah oh. something that he's learned 13, to calibrate so 15. well over the last couple of years. I mentioned the fact that he lost his first, I think it was eight finals to Man Arena, but now he's he's won four of the last five. He just understands when to go to the open court after that serve, when to go back behind. It's taken him a while it's taken him a while to understand his game, how is to it, execute it best. This is his chance, Robbie. just ups the ante ever so slightly well it may be a it may be a, a minute chance evil. but at 30 15 it may be one of the last ones he gets so 30 all now he needs to try and string two amazing points together here in a row i got my fingers crossed for him he hasn't served volleyed does he do something completely well i think he's got to shorten the point at least well i'm not sure about his serving volley how, how maybe the body and serving volley but Go in, finish the point. Oh, he's got a game point. That'll do. Oh, the crowd are going to erupt if he could get one more. Come on, Adrian. 14, 14. Fire him up, Fitzy. All right, where does he go? He's got, got to get one point. Wide. As wide as he can. Game 
Ready to test. I'm telling you, that has made my day. Well, it's given them something to cheer about. A boy, as he had to work hard. Alison about when she started the clock, but then suddenly there were all these fans that were coming in. He was hoping for them to settle Please. before the clock was started. That's what I'm guessing that conversation Thank was you. about. that category of players that have been triple bageled at a major I can tell you players who have done it Stefan Edberg against Stefan Eriksson at Wimbledon and the same at the US Open it was Yvonne Lendley against our good friend Barry Moyer I remember that well Sergi Bruguera did it at the French against Thierry Champion. A Frenchman. Well, isn't it amazing that even a guy ranked 20 in the world, you can feel impotent on a, on a, in a stage like this as, as wonderful a player as you are by someone like this. It's it's yep. it's a cruel game sometimes. There is a lot of love for Adrian Manorino here. It's 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 really nice to see. There is for Novak too. Don't worry about that. But but uh, it's great to see the Frenchman here get some encouragement and support, and he deserves it. And you're absolutely right. That the match is not flat, is it? Even though the scoreline might suggest that would be the case. Yeah, has been a great vibe around the place. Because of the quality of the rallies, Novak leads 2 1 in the third. You can see how meticulous Manorino is with his grip. He's got the thinnest of pieces of tape there just to help the grip feel optimum in that left hand of his. Well, you want all the ridges to be symmetrical. He obviously very much likes to know where the bevel of his racket face is. And if the grip has a lot of bevels, as that one does, he's actually got a little bit of tape to square it up ever so slightly under that overwrap. It's very important to him that that grip is perfect. It feels perfect in the hand. He knows where the racket face is. Time. Well, in case you were wondering, should Manorino go down today? How much money would he take home? Well, his efforts this week by winning three, five setters in a row. 
garner him 375,000 Aussie dollars. That's for a loser in the round of 16. Interesting there, Novak. He just he's bunted a lot of balls back when he's been at full stretch. Manarino has only come in once on the sneak. And we talk about the conditions. That ball just sat there. Manarino probably prefers the ball coming on to generate pace from pace, redirect pace. Generating his own, not always as comfortable. And Novak certainly hasn't overplayed. He hasn't fed him with Love pace. 50. He's fed him with accuracy. Oh, it's been Depth. Mes mesmeric. So often is. Ball. working up the geometry suggesting you should have changed things up had his vectors wrong there you reckon <laughs> I think that could be the first serve cool. volley point for Adrian Manorino. Yes, it is. Susceptible to anything down the line. You can see there's a big gap there because he's so wide of that centre tee. But it's hard to hit across the line of flight. And Novak is very keen to send the ball back where it came from on return more often than not. Made for an easy volley. Nice little change up. Ball. Probably don't want to. 30, 40. But I'm just wondering after that last little dig from Novak and where it landed, he almost had to come in, Manorino. He didn't want to. And he sort of lifted and retreated. There he is there, and then he retreats. Paul was so short he probably had to come in. It's not where he likes to spend his time. available to him he goes into his lockdown mode refusing to miss he is more than qualified from the neck upwards that we know all too well
Every now and then, Novak is just guilty. He throws the ball a little far out in front, collapses, loses his margin. Yeah, for the most part, in the last two and a half sets, the serve has been deadly accurate. It's funny, isn't it? Remember, he had that uh, elbow problem and he... Todd Martin was helping him for a while there. He's changing his serve. He's trying to work on things and serve looked like a liability, but pff, ever since that moment, it's one of the game's great underrated shots. Oh. I don't think it's underrated anymore. Wally, Fitzy, you tell me a player that you can think of that has changed a shot so much that was at the top of the game and has made it so good because players don't tend to change their technique too much. It's been a complete overhaul, if you think where it was back in 2010 to what it is now. I mean, the improvement, and it's got better and better each and every season. That's the scary part. Right on cue. But that's, that's his whole mindset, isn't it? Marian Vida, who used to coach him, told, I grew up playing juniors with Marian. Marian yep. told me a story. He had an incredible year, 72 and 3, something outrageous, going back. And they met for the preseason. They were all high-fiving each other. And Novak pretty much walked into the room and said, what have you done over the last four weeks to make me a better player? Yeah, it's just his mindset, onwards and upwards, never satisfied. It's pretty easy on the eye. 4-1 in the third. The spectator or the serve? Both. Both. Very good. I mean, is it is it good to be part of this experience if you're Adrian Manorino in his lifetime to play against Novak in his pomp playing at a tournament where he's He's done things that no one's ever done. It's something you can, you know, talk to your kids about in your rocking chair one day. Fourth round is a great achievement. There's the great Rod Laver, of course. So fourth round, I think you said it, 370 odd thousand Australian dollars. So absolutely, it's where he wants to be. If you were 25, you might walk away with a few thoughts about what next. At 35, he can be Sorry. pretty satisfied with what he's achieved, Adrian Manorino. And Maybe today is one of those days he just has to take his licks. <laughs> Djokovic bidding to reach the quarterfinals at a major for the 58th time in his career. 58. And of course, if he does go on to win yet, equal Roger Federer's all time record for most quarterfinal appearances at the majors. Next closest is Nadal with 47. Fifteen Let's 
you know, Robbie, to try and answer that question about is it a good experience or not, I remember Jason Stoltenberg, the Wimbledon semi-finals, playing a Davis Cup match in uh, South America, and he had match point and lost, and he walked off and he said, he said, that's the best experience and the worst experience in my tennis career, all wrapped up into one. And I can see this as being a bit the same. 14, 15. That's, that's, that's an interesting view, viewpoint, and it's an intelligent one as well, because I absolutely see both sides of it. Because I think we can all agree Adrian has not played badly he's too good a player to play badly he's just been beaten up today but um, yes. Adrian Manorino played Rafa on this court going back a number of years epic first set hour and a half seven six Rafa won it and it was two and one for Rafa I saw Adrian play Demon on John Kane Arena a couple of years ago Demon just wore him down in four just said all just ran over the top of him and that's why I said if he if Adrian was 25 experiencing those those oh. runaway losses you, you'd have a little think about what you're doing off court and how you can maintain but at 35 as you say well there's only so much you can do off court at 35 But there is no question he hasn't quite had the legs today given the three five setters that he played to get here. If it was first round, do you think he would have the legs then? I don't think the score line would be as lopsided, put it that way. I think there was some tired execution in those first couple of sets. Just one more on his physicality, just to to keep this in mind with Manorino. He's won 11 of the last 12 five setters he's played. The only guy to beat him was Federer at Wimbledon. He's beaten the likes of Medvedev, Vavrinka. Of course, the opening round here. Pasal will remember his loss 2022 at Wimbledon to Man Arena 6-4 in the fifth okay. It's bringing the heat today Djokovic, just a game away now from a place in the quarterfinals. I've seen Novak in a lot of majors, Robbie. You've seen him in more. I've seen him in better moods. He's winning. He's dropping sets, but he's winning. Let us have a look at that first serve placement. Gee, he hits the close to the lines. Yeah, that blue zone is two feet from the line. That, those are Federer-esque numbers and then some. 89% on the juice side is geometric perfection. Have you caught the tram for the courts, Robbie? And not this year, but I have in previous years. If you have, you would have heard John Fitzgerald's voice welcoming you to the Australian Open whilst riding the tram. Time. Wow. Very soothing. Very welcoming. The eight of the AO 2024 record crowds yesterday, just north of 93,000 people through the turnstiles. 
more of the same today. Exact number, 93,723. We might get close to the, the million mark. You don't deal in round numbers, do you? Uh, like the decimals. Uh, got it. <laughs> so, that's quite an event, isn't it? Nudging a million spectators over the course of 15 days. And these tennis majors are some of the biggest annual sporting events. Golf numbers don't pull in the same sort of crowds as these. Of course, they only have four days. Formula One these days gets a, a fair few fans over the three days that they have their event. Oh. We haven't gotten to see the bag of tricks today from Adrian Manorino, but he's a shot maker of rare quality. He'd had enough of that game. What's he got left in store here? Djokovic about to serve. Thank you. Restraint sets victory. Kind of sums it up, doesn't it? Novak clips the tape, it jumps over. 30. Adrian no. hits the tape. Very clean strike. Stays on his side. Novak has executed to perfection. Adrian maybe just half a step off the pace of his best game. Paid a heavy price for it. a skilled merchant and we've seen his full array of shots today in attack in defense he has been ruthlessly efficient he's at match point
6-3. Robbie, did you see the gladiator? Maximus, are you not entertained? It's almost like... This is what I do. Rock me alone with me. I am here. Adrian Matarino did not see the best of him today. A little jaded, and he was up against Novak. He was in sparkling form. We'll see a little more of Adrian. Keep an eye out for him on the grass. A very, very tricky customer. He can hold his head up high. Just physically fatigued. And Novak is not the man that you want to play when he's half a step slow. Yeah, coming off a career best season last year. He's playing at his career high. Ranking is Adrian Manorino of 19, but it just shows you how good this guy is. And we've got to take it all in because uh, who knows how much longer he is going to be around for. He is carved from a different cloth. Novak's ready to have a chat with Jim Courier. Novak, very well done. You said after your last match that that was your best performance so far in the tournament. Was this one even better? Well, I have to say yes, obviously, the first two sets. Uh, yeah, one of the best sets I played in a while. Um, and, you know, I really wanted to lose that game in the third set because uh, the, the, ten the tension was building up so much in the stadium. Um, I, just needed, uh, I just needed to get that one out of the way so I can refocus on... Uh, on what I need to do to close out the match. So, you know, I've uh, I played great, you know, from the first to the last point. Obviously, never easy to play. Adrian, who is a very unorthodox player, um, you know, uses the angles really well and he's got one of the flattest and most consistent backhands in the game. Uh, it's kind of cat and mouse, really, uh, tennis match against him. So I had to, I had to uh, in a way, physically endure the long rallies and try to run him around the court, which I did, and I think served, I served very well, you know, in the moments when I needed to, to come up with the first serve I did, so all in all, great performance. You've been asked about how you've been feeling on the court, in the press room, you, you've admitted you're not feeling your best, you're dealing with something uh, illness-wise. How important was it for you to be efficient and win this match this quickly today? I mean, you always want to be efficient, right? You always want to finish the job as, as soon as possible in straight sets, but uh, not, always, not always possible because, obviously, uh, you're playing as the tournament progresses, tougher opponents that, uh, you know, uh, have a, possess a really high-quality tennis and, you know, uh, obviously, best of five, you never know what's going to happen. But I wasn't thinking about it. You know, I was kind of going with the flow and the uh, last couple of days has been really good, so... It's, it's going in a positive direction, health-wise, tennis-wise, so I'm really, really pleased with uh, where I am at the moment. As you should be. Rolling into the quarterfinals again. Something a little offbeat. You know, you, you were playing in your charity match here last week, and, and someone asked you about your all-blue ensemble, very snappy. I've even noticed you've got the blue watch that matches the whole thing, but your coach thought it was too blue. Have you guys had a discussion? You also have the, the white shirt. How involved are you in this fashion statement you're making? Well, uh, I, think, I think the only um, piece of clothing that... Uh, my coach minded and also Sabalenka minded were my socks, so uh, they both told me that I have to change from blue to white socks, so that's, that's why I've been playing with white socks. And uh, that's it. You know, I got blue socks uh, in the bag just in case uh, for kind of a fashion statement, but uh, it's more about tennis right now, and then after the tournament, I'll, I'll focus on fashion. You're making a big statement with your racket, that's for sure. And your next match is going to be a tricky one. Uh, it could be the American Taylor Fritz. It could be the finalist that you defeated last year, Stefano Tsitsipas. They're playing right now. Fritz won the first set. I don't know if we've got an updated score line, but your thoughts on the challenge ahead for you as you move into the quarterfinals and beyond here? Well, uh, we know Stefanos uh, and I played the finals here last year. He had a great tournament. You know, he's been established, you know, top five, top ten player for, for many years now. Um, very experienced on playing on a big stage. Um, you know, he's got a complete game, obviously. 
very focused, uh, great player, you know, no, no doubt. On the other hand, you have Fritz. Let's see, you know, they're battling it out right now. Hopefully they go to five sets over six hours and uh, <laughs> with, some, with some rain interruptions and uh, light dysfunction and uh, roof, uh, whatever, uh, so they can continue tomorrow. But uh, no, I mean, obviously it's going to be a tough one. I mean, there, there are no easy matches now, so um, I'm going to have to be ready for the battle, whoever it is across the net. And last question for you. You've played so many night matches here in, in recent times. Is this the first time in a couple tournaments for you that you've played the day match? Any adjustments? Did it feel normal? There's a lot of people in the social media that, that think oh, Novak doesn't want to play in the day. Did you mind playing the day today? The way I play today, I don't mind playing in the day, you know, to be honest. But, <laughs> but, um, thank you. Thank you guys for showing up also, you know. I know it's maybe uh, early in the day, but it's Sunday, not working day, so thank everyone for showing up. It's, it's great to see a packed Rod Laver Arena. It's beautiful to see that. Um, yeah. Um, it's no secret I love to play at 7 p.m., but, you know, uh, it wasn't bad at all today. Not too bad today as well. Not too bad. Well, you can watch Andre Rublev and Alex Timonor at 7 p.m. tonight. But that was Novak's time to win of the day.